Welcome back to another rebuild I got for you guys here today. Today I'm doing a fantasy style rebuild of the Los Angeles Chargers. So all trades are possible. I can do whatever I want really just to make this team into the best possible team that I can. But before I get into this one, I want to mention that I am completely out of words you know, to use. Actually, I have a word for this video, but then after this video, I don't have any more words in my notes. So comment any word you would like me to use if you want. If not, I can just think of random stuff. It really doesn't matter. But if you want me to say any specific word for whatever reason, let me know in the comments. But I'm going to get into this one now. Here's a look at the Chargers offense. I think this offense, you know, has what it takes to take this team to the, uh, to the playoffs next year. And I think the defense is good enough as well. The defense is, I think, think very good one of the best defenses in the NFL but Phillip Rivers is the leader of this offense the quarterback of course for the past 13 years I feel like this player has been uh, you know I think Phillip Rivers has been sort of underrated throughout his career he's very very good I think he's a great quarterback maybe he's not been that underrated since I think he's made it on the NFL's top 100 honestly for the past bunch of years but he was like I don't, I don't know what he just was like 50 something if I don't know he's a very good player but he is the quarterback of this team. Don't really know what I'm going to do with him. Geno Smith is here. I don't even know they signed Geno Smith. I might keep Phillip Rivers for, you know, one season out of respect for him and then probably try to trade him and draft a quarterback or something. Melvin Gordon is a starting running back. Austin Eckler is a very good rookie. He's a good receiving back, if I'm not mistaken. 69 catching. Actually, I don't know if that's very good. But I think, I thought he was kind of the receiving back. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he's better in real life than he is in Madden. Keenan Allen. So glad to see him, you know, play a full season. I really like Keenan Allen. He's a great wide receiver, but he's just been riddled with injury throughout his career. But finally, he played a full season again and put up what, I don't know actually how many yards he had, like 1,300, 1,200, something like that. He had a killer season. He's a great wide receiver, a fantastic number one. Travis Benjamin's a good special teams guy. I think I'm going to trade him, though, because he's 27 years old. Tyrell Williams will likely be the number two. I like him. He did not do that well this past year. I thought he was going to do a lot better than he did, like... The year before this past one, he actually put up some pretty good numbers. I liked him in fantasy football. He did pretty well for me. And then Mike Williams was their rookie receiver. I really don't know what he did this season. I honestly can't tell you if he did anything. I think he was injured for a little while. I think that's what happened. But their offensive line, I mean, I think it got a little better in the offseason with uh, Marquise Pouncey coming over. No, Mike Pouncey. Yeah, Mike Pouncey. I always get the Pouncey brothers confused. He came over in the offseason. Forrest Lamp, I don't think he played. Pretty sure he was injured this past year so with him back this next season their offensive line should be actually pretty decent Russell Okung is here Dan Feeney 74 overall he's a rookie actually I did not know he was a rookie okay so I'm gonna keep him there probably at left guard just to see if he can develop Joe Barksdale I mean I think he's rather old I think he's around 30 he is 29 so he's gonna get traded Russell Okung will probably get traded as well 29 years old Hunter Henry just tore his ACL which is so rough he's a great tight end I really want him to do super well in the NFL but you know he was behind Antonio Gates the past couple years, um, well, the past two years, right? And he did actually play pretty well. Did Antonio? Wow. Why can't I remember if Antonio Gates played? I think he, he did play last year, right? Wow, that's bad that I can't remember that right now. I just don't remember him doing much, to be honest. I remember Hunter Henry catching a couple, you know, touchdown passes. Virgil Green is their backup, I guess. He's not bad. I can probably try to trade him. 29 years old. I'm sure he has some value. But Hunter Henry, it's a huge loss for this team, honestly, that he tore his ACL. He's a great target, especially in the red zone. Then on the defense... This defense is very talented. Jaleel Adai played pretty well this past year. He's 27 years old. 83 speed is actually really rough. I might have to get rid of him and try to upgrade there. But they also did draft Derwin James, which is a great pick for them. It's honestly might have made this secondary the best secondary in the NFL. I don't know. This secondary is ridiculous. Casey Hayward, Trevor Williams, Jason Ferret, Desmond King. This cornerback group is fantastic. Honestly, the most expendable one is probably Jason Verrett. I really like Jason Verrett. But the thing is, Casey Hayward I'm not getting rid of. Trevor Williams is younger, 23 years old, 3 years younger. Doesn't have quick development, but that can come. And then Desmond King is a rookie. So, like, I want to keep Desmond King in case he gets a lot of experience. I want to keep Trevor Williams because he's younger than Jason Verrett. And I want to keep Casey Hayward because Casey Hayward is one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, if not the best. And then Jason Verrett, I mean, he's a great corner. In real life, he's been injured a lot, which is another issue with this team. Why it hasn't been so good over the past few years. They've had a very talented roster for the past couple seasons, but like their star players keep getting hurt. 
But yeah, I think I might trade Jason Verrett. I'm sorry, Chargers fans. I really do like him, but I think it's just honestly better to trade him since there's so much depth here at cornerback. This D-line is one of the best in the NFL as well. Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa, fantastic defensive ends. Corey Legit, Brandon Meebane, not bad defensive tackles. Legit's 27. Maybe I can keep him for a season or two. I might try to trade him because he definitely has some trade value. Linebackers aren't that great. Jatavis Brown, Denzel Perriman aren't bad players at all. I don't even know who this is. Honestly, I'm not sure. Okay, Hayes. Pullard the third I definitely have to upgrade a linebacker but let me get into some trades I'm giving the Falcons McGrath who was a tight end that I moved down to fullback Kyle Emanuel and Brandon Meebane for Deion Jones Geno Smith McCain and Andre Williams for the Jets first round draft pick and two fifth rounders from them Travis Benjamin Virgil Green and Russell Okung for the Texans third rounder and DJ Reader Jaleel Adai Corey Legit and a third round draft pick for Zach Martin I really do like Corey Legit I'm sorry I got rid of him I'm also sorry I got rid of Jaleel Adai because he's a good player but it's Zach Martin he's a fantastic offensive lineman Joe Barksdale Mike Pouncey and Phillips for the Giants first and fifth round draft picks Jason Verrett and Anwualu for Shaq Mason and Malcolm Brown Darius Phylon Schofield and Cardale Jones for Carl Joseph. This is kind of ridiculous, but I'm giving the Raiders Jenkins and Davis a 68 overall and a 65 overall for Rodney Hudson, who's an 89 overall. This is going to be the team heading into the first season. This team should make the playoffs. I think Phillip Rivers can play well enough. I think Melvin Gordon can do well enough. I think this offense as a whole can just kind of dominate. I think this team should be in the playoffs. This offensive line is very good now. Zach Martin, I moved to left tackle. Shaq Mason's here at left guard. He is currently a right guard. Definitely have to switch this because if I kept him at right guard and he's playing left guard, the uh, the sack stats would look a lot better than they actually are. For some reason, it doesn't count. Like when this player gets sacks, I think then it like makes him really, really low. Dan Feeney's the center. Forrest Lamp's the right guard. I think you actually are a right guard. Okay, you are. And then Rodney Hudson is going to be my right tackle. Uh, yeah, this offense is very good. It should put up a lot of points. And then on the defense, I don't think it gets much worse. Honestly, our free safety isn't great. It's Jalen Watkins, but Carl Joseph is actually a pretty good looking strong safety. He has pretty bad stats though. 62 zone coverage, 54 man coverage, but it does have quick development. So I'm sure he can develop into at least a decent safety at the end of the rebuild. This cornerback core is still amazing. The defensive line's very good still. Two very good defensive tackles here. And then the linebacker core really didn't change. I didn't, yeah, I didn't change at all, except for Deion Jones. The outside linebackers I didn't even touch. I just moved Jatavis Brown to right outside linebacker, so it makes sure he's playing there. That might have been what it showed before, but it actually, they were both left outside linebackers. I moved him over here because he's younger than Denzel Perriman. That's literally the only reason. And then Deion Jones, of course, is the middle linebacker. So I think this team can make it into the playoffs. Let's see if we can. I'll see you at the midseason mark. So we have a bye week at the midseason mark, so I'm not sure what the record's all about. But we are 7-1. and one. The Raiders are 6-2. and two. That's pretty surprising. The Broncos are 1-6, and six, and the Chiefs are 1-7. and seven. We just lost to the Patriots, too. So we won our first seven games and then lost to the Patriots there. It's all right, though. Uh, 2.4 thousand experience for Phillip Rivers. Not fantastic. I mean, he's old, so didn't really expect him to get that much. 3.1 thousand from Melvin Gordon. Nearly 10 thousand from Mike Williams. It's pretty cool, at least. And then on the defense, anyone have a lot? I don't see that much, really, for anyone. 5.6 thousand from Deion Jones isn't bad. What about Desmond King? 4.7 thousand. Okay. So I don't even know who this is, that player that we have to bring back. So that's a good sign. Isaac Rochelle, okay, and then Cole Toner, so nobody that I want to, you know, negotiate with. That's fine. We are in the playoffs, but we went 12-4 and four and did not get a first round bye. The Browns went 8-8 eight and eight and actually made it. That's pretty cool. The Raiders went 13-3. and three. Chiefs 5-11, and 11, the Broncos 5-11 and 11 as well. Wow, this is a very good division, you know, the top two teams. 2-2 two two in the preseason, though. We did win the first seven games. That's nice. Did we play the Raiders in that? We actually beat the Raiders, so that's cool to see. Then we lost to the Patriots, won three more. Then lost to the Browns and the Redskins. We actually lost to the Browns. Then we beat the Chiefs, the Jets, and then we lost to the Raiders. So, you know, we split the season with the Raiders. They went 13-3, and though. That's a crazy season. Tom Brady wins MVP. Phillip Rivers, 4,686 yards, 36 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Really good season there. Melvin Gordon, 1,258 yards, 9 touchdowns, only one fumble. Austin Eckler, 535 yards. That's pretty good there for a backup with 12 touchdowns and no fumbles. Keenan Allen, 1,300 yards, 7 touchdowns. Tyra Williams nearing it on 1,000 yards with 7 touchdowns. And Mike Williams, 1,164 yards with 8 touchdowns. Not bad there. Sacks, five let up from Zach Martin, three from Shaq Mason, two from Ronnie Hudson, one from Forrest Lamp, 
Not many sacks lit up at all. That's what I like to see. 103 tackles from Deion Jones. Isn't a ton, but he did get five picks, so that's actually pretty cool. Uh, 10 tackles for loss for DJ Reader. It's not bad at all. He had nine sacks as well, but Melvin Ingram had 14 and a half. Joey Bose had 11 and a half. DJ Reader, like I said, had nine picks. We got six from Casey Hayward, five from Deion Jones, three from Trevor Williams, and one from Jatavis Brown. So Desmond King did not get one. That's kind of disappointing. And we also did not get any touchdowns. We were second in the NFL in offense, though. Defense is probably top 10. Third. Okay, wow. Very good team here. Tom Brady comes in first for MVP, like I mentioned earlier. But then, you know, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott are right there, too. But we have Phillip Rivers in there at number uh, seven. That's not bad. Marshawn Lynch made it. That's pretty cool. AFC Offensive Player of the Year does go to Tom Brady. Marshawn Lynch comes in second. Phillip Rivers comes in third, though. I kind of want to check out Marshawn Lynch uh, and like, see what he did this season. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Tahir Whitehead. Jeez. Melvin Ingram is in there at number five. Deion Jones in there at number eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Austin Eckler is in there. So is Mike Williams. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year. Anybody from the Chargers? I do not see anybody. Let me check out Marshawn Lynch's season quickly. Marshawn Lynch had 1,524 yards with 13 touchdowns, but Doug Martin had 16 touchdowns as a backup. This team did so well. Also, Derek Carr threw three interceptions. The entire season, he threw three interceptions. This team did really well. That's a pretty weird season. They relied very heavily on the run, but I mean, it worked out for him. Let's check out our experience, though. 51,000 from Mike Williams, and he has superstar development. That was from the Pro Bowl. That is awesome. Keenan Allen, 33,000. Tyra Williams, 10,000. 42K from Forrest Lamp. What is up with this experience right now? This team is going to be one of the best teams we've ever had, I think, after, you know, honestly, after this season, this team can be fantastic. 19,000 from Hunter Henry. And then on the defense, we got not honestly much at all. 10,000 from Deion Jones looks like the most. Yeah, wow, okay. The offense got all the experience, pretty much. The word for this rebuild is going to be trains. So comment in trains if you've made it this far into the video. I'll greatly appreciate that. All those comments, you know, I'll love them. I'll respond to a few of them like I always do. All that good stuff. Anyway, though, let's get into the team. Melvin Gordon went up a little bit. Phillip Rivers is a 90, but three overall points is from confidence there. Mike Williams went up to an 86. This offensive line is looking more and more deadly. Uh, I think Keenan Allen went up a little bit, Hunter Henry went up a little bit, and then on the defense, not too much changed because we really didn't get all that much experience, but Carl Joseph went up by one, Trevor Williams went up by a couple. I put everything into Carl Joseph's uh, zone coverage, maybe I can eventually get that to be pretty good. I think Deion Jones went up by one, Tavis Brown may have as well. But anyway, let's see if we can take down the Browns. Usually the Chargers are ridiculous to try to defeat in the playoffs, and we did beat the Browns, so hopefully that you know goes for us here. Let's go right to the Super Bowl. Did we take down the Patriots and are we in the Super Bowl? We lost to the Patriots. We lost to them, you know, in the, uh, sometime during the regular season as well. But what was the score? Actually, no, we beat the Patriots and we lost to the Jaguars. My bad. I skipped a couple weeks ahead. But that's pretty cool. Unless we beat the, at least we beat the Patriots. The Browns, though, 526 total yards from this team. 336 yards from Phillip Rivers with two touchdowns. Tyrod Taylor really didn't play terribly. He didn't really do much, though. What was his completion? Uh, it was 15 for 32. Okay, that's actually really bad. 46%. It's actually quite terrible. Melvin Gordon had a great game. 125 yards, two touchdowns. Duke Johnson actually did not run badly. Austin Eckler and Tyrod Taylor had a touchdown as well. Mike Williams had a touchdown. So did Keenan Allen, who had four catches for 124 yards. Corey Coleman also got a touchdown. Let's briefly go over this Patriots game. We took them down, though. We had more yards than they did as well. Tom Brady really did not do much at all. Phillip Rivers played pretty decently. Melvin Gordon had a touchdown. Austin Eckler had a touchdown. Keenan Allen went off this game. He had two touchdowns. Cordero Patterson had a touchdown as well. Let's check out the loss to the Jaguars, 47-41. to Four touchdowns, two picks from Phillip Rivers. One touchdown, two interceptions from Blake Bortles. So Phillip Rivers definitely played better. Melvin Gordon, pretty identical to what he did against the Patriots. Leonard Fournette had a touchdown, as did Austin Eckler. But TJ Yeldon had three touchdowns with nine yards. That's a strange game. Austin Safarian Jenkins had 10 catches, 116 yards. Mike Williams almost had 200 yards with a touchdown. Didi Westbrook had a touchdown. Keenan Allen had one. Melvin Gordon had two that was a very high scoring game. That probably would have been super, you know, exciting to watch in real life. I'm heading into free agency here. $21.39 million to bring in some players. Really isn't that much, but there's never anyone that great here. And exactly like I said, there's no one that good. So I'm not going to bring in anybody unless I find a stud randomly down here. But I will see you in the draft though. I have the first and the second overall picks. So I'm probably going to trade this one away with a team that I know will not take a quarterback or maybe a safety because there's a quarterback and a safety that I really want in the early first round. So let me go try to do that. I'm going to have to do this one manually since nobody's offering anything. I'm trading back with the Titans. So a quarterback is their fifth need, but if this team takes a quarterback, that's ridiculous because they have Marcus Mariota. 
but I'm getting, of course, their first, their second, and their first next year. Um, they also have a decent need for a strong safety, but I think what they should go with is this one outside linebacker. That's pretty high up. He is not high up anymore. That's kind of concerning. He was really high up earlier. Did he fall? He's a late first rounder now. Was it that? I think that guy was supposed to go, like, right away. All right, well, if they take a quarterback, I'm going to be thoroughly pissed off because they don't need a quarterback. I'm actually kind of worried now. They took that quarterback. Why did they take that quarterback? I'm trading for that guy. I'm going to try to get rid of everything that I can to trade for that guy. That's absolutely insane that they actually drafted him. So, whatever. I'm going to trade for him. I don't normally like trading for rookies, but they definitely should not have drafted that guy. That was a bit ridiculous. I'm probably going to be trading away again, though. That's three first-round draft picks. Two, for, two this year, one next year. Wow. Um, maybe with the Broncos? Let me see. I want a safety. I have the fourth overall pick as well. The Broncos might take a safety? I think I might take this pick. I think I'm going to take this pick. I might draft two safeties. But let's go with this guy. Martez Milburn. I know this guy is superstar development. 80 overall. Superstar development. Very good safety. 92 speed. 80 zone. 76 tackle. 82 pursuit. 90 acceleration. 90 hit power. 24 years old. Not fantastic. But, I mean, superstar dev. Can't really get past that. That Gomes guy did look very good as well. I was considering drafting that guy. But I'm going to take this other safety as well. Reed Largent. This guy looks very good. A minus hit power, B catching, B minus zone coverage. Looks just as good as the last guy. 80 overall, quick development. Drafting a rookie safety, you know, duo is always the way to go. I'm trading up with the Broncos to make sure I get this one player. So I'm giving them um, my last first round draft pick, Tevi, and a fifth rounder for the sixth overall pick. I didn't trade up to the current pick. That's what the Cardinals, but I'm sure the Cardinals are going to take a left tackle. They should. Okay, they did take a left tackle. That guy looked very good, by the way. That was probably the best left tackle I have ever seen. I'm definitely going to have to check him out. But with this pick, I'm going with a wide receiver. Shenard Deloach. This guy looks extremely good. B-plus catch in traffic, B-catching, B-route running. 4-3-5 speed is insane. Very good 20-yard shuttle. Very good 3-cone. This guy looks like a beast. 76 with slow. I can't believe this guy has slow development. That's horrible. Oh, that's really rough. That was a that was a waste of a pick for sure. Carrick Garner is going to be my draft pick right now. This guy looks pretty tremendous. A minus hit power, B block shed, B minus pursuit with a very good combine. He'll probably come in and start at outside linebacker for me. 76 overall, quick development. Technically we reached, but I mean 85 speed, 84 block shed, 92 hit power. What's your zone coverage? All about 75 zone coverage is not bad. So this guy is definitely going to start. Henry Kendricks is going to be my next player that I take. 23-year-old center from Virginia with a very good combine. 33 reps is not bad. 5.14 speed isn't terrible either. It looks like a great center. 76 overall, quick development. This guy's going to be my starting center. The late-round talent in this draft really isn't that great, to be honest. Rashawn Lavalais is the player I'm going with. He's not going to be good. He's going to be like a 72 overall. 68 overall, even worse. Didn't really expect much from him, but I figured I'd, you know, take a shot on him. Like I said, though, the late round talent really isn't here. Honestly, there's like a couple players maybe that'll, that are good late, but I also didn't look at any offensive linemen really because I didn't need, I don't need any offensive linemen. There was another player I had scouted here that just got drafted. It's all good though. Let's go with Artie Sanders. This guy's combine is insane. Maybe he's something special. 72 overall. I mean, he's a very good player, actually. 90 speed, 92 acceleration, 88 hit power. 72 zone isn't horrible, but of course I'm not going to use him because I drafted those other safeties. I took three safeties in this draft. I also have uh, two picks back-to-back -back right now. Let's go with Morris Massey. I doubt this guy's anything great, but let's check him out. 70 overall, normal development. He actually has really good stats, though. Really low awareness. I see that really low release, but 95 jumping, 92 speed. This draft has been pretty bad, to be honest. Those safeties were great, but then that one wide receiver we drafted was quite tragic. I have another one scouted here. But uh, let's see, I have four draft picks left, and I have four players left. Might as well go to select everybody that I want here. So, Bradley Foster, I'll take you now. Are you anything special? 72 overall, normal development. He's ranked 65th in the entire draft, actually, so he might be a higher overall than that. Probably won't start him, but he's not a bad player. I took a bunch of wide receivers in this draft, too. I took three safeties and three wide receivers. It's kind of funny. But let's check out the other players I have here. I'm going to go with this fullback because I know this guy is like probably the best player in this draft. Okay, the second best player in this draft, 81 overall. Obviously, I knew that guy was going to be a beast. Two more players here. I have a middle linebacker and a defensive tackle. The defensive tackle I have is actually, he's actually supposed to go undrafted, but I honestly think he might be pretty decent. Kevin Stafford, though, early seventh round pick. He's going to be like a 73 or a 68. I keep 
overestimating these guys. He is actually better than the last dude we drafted for sure. And the last pick is going to a defensive tackle. I'm sorry, this draft was actually very underwhelming. I had like, that one quarterback is probably like an 86 that I wanted to take. I'm going to try my best to trade for him. If I can't trade for him, I might keep Phillip Rivers or maybe I'll just trade for another quarterback. Quincy McMillan. Actually a very good defensive tackle for where he was supposed to go. He's supposed to be undrafted and he's ranked 81st. 86 strength, 82 acceleration. It's pretty quick too. He's not a bad player really. This is the left tackle that the Cardinals drafted. The dude that said was like one of the best left tackles I've ever seen. 80 run block, 85 pass block, 86 impact block, you know, when his confidence is normal. With 89 strength, he's a really good player. So, this guy's an 84 overall for the Titans. I'm going to do my best to trade for this guy. It's going to be probably impossible. But I don't even know if this guy would start anyway, because Mariota's an 84, I think. Maybe. If Mariota's on the trade block, that'd be pretty funny. I could get him, and I'm not going to, because I just kind of had Mariota and my Titans a realistic rebuild. So... If I can't trade for this guy, maybe I'll just keep Phillip Rivers for another year. I don't know yet. This guy's not even going to start. Mariota's an 86 overall. This guy's an 84 overall. I don't know why they took him. That was kind of a waste of a draft pick because there was definitely players there that they should have taken. But let's see what I can do here. So I wasn't able to get that quarterback. It would have taken too much. I don't even think it's possible because I gave them a player that they were interested in and two first round draft picks. And it was like 75% of the way up there. That guy's not going to start, and he's just going to be behind Marcus Mariota forever, really. So that's a bit of a waste. But anyway, I'm giving the Buccaneers Denzel Perriman, Carl Joseph, and a third rounder next year for Levante David, who's up to a 96 overall. This is the team I'm going to be taking into the second season. There's really not much different about this team in general, but Kendricks is now the starting center, and Bradford is now the starting fullback. I think those are the only two differences on offense. Everything else is the same. And then on the defense, what I decided to do is have Levante David play right outside linebacker. Gian Jones is playing left outside linebacker. And Gardner, who is the left outside linebacker we drafted, is going to be playing middle. I think this could work out pretty well because he has quick development. He can probably get a ton of experience if he wins defensive rookie of the year. Now I just have Jatavis Brown chilling here. So if I need a player next season, I can trade him. That's perfectly fine. Maybe for a defensive tackle if these guys aren't panning out. But... Uh, these safeties look a lot better now in the right scheme. 82 overall for this guy, 81 overall for Largent over here. Cornerback core is still very, very good. Largent's a 77 rated corner. That's pretty funny. The D-line is unchanged, but the only thing really different over here on Specialist, I guess I can say, is Deloach, the one slow developing guy we drafted, is our starting kick returner and punt returner. So that's not bad. I'll see you at the midseason. At the midseason mark here, we are 6-2. and two. I guess that's a bit worse than, you know, our record last year at this time. But we are on top of the division. 3-4 for the Chiefs, 3-4 for the Raiders, and 2-6 and from the Broncos, who we just lost to by 4 points. Uh, 13,000 experience from Phillip Rivers is a lot. 19,000 from Mike Williams. The reason why I think he has so much is because I didn't spend his experience after our playoff games. I think he had like 7,000, so technically he only gained like 10 to 12,000 this season. 10,000 from Melvin Gordon. I'll probably spend some of this. Eh, maybe not actually, the more I think about it. 10,000 from Joey Bosa. Not bad. 9,000 from this safety. 12,000 from this safety. I'm going to spend this though. I like to spend it on the rookies for sure. You actually already have pretty decent awareness. 73 awareness is not bad. Decent player recognition as well. 84 overall. Rookie strong safety. Not a bad player whatsoever. I didn't take notice to how much the middle linebacker got. 6.2 thousand. Hope that goes up at the end of the season of course. But we have to bring back some players here. Zach Martin is one of them. Definitely want him back on the team. 99 overall left tackle. The best player pretty much on this entire team. He is coming back to the team. Good to see. Melvin Gordon, another player that I really want back. One of our better offensive weapons for sure. He is coming back to the team. Casey Hayward. I say this a lot, but I think he's like one of the best corners, if not the best corner in the NFL. Honestly, I feel like he might be the best. Him and Chris Harris, I always thought. Actually, I always thought Chris Harris was the best. But as of recently, I've been thinking Casey Hayward is. I don't know. You guys can, you know, argue in the comments or something. Trevor Williams, I want back. We just brought back Shaq Mason. We don't have that much money, actually. You know, we have a lot of players to bring back here. Hopefully we get them all. Malcolm Brown, another guy that I want back on the team. Let me actually bring this down quite a bit, see if he accepts that. He is going to accept that. Tyrell Williams, I do like him. He has quick development. Do I want him back, though? I might try to draft the wide receiver this year, so I don't really think I want him. Plus, we don't have much money, so I'm going to let him go. My bad, Tyrell Williams fans. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> So we got a first round bye. That's pretty cool to see. 12 and 4, isn't that when we went last season? 7 and 9 from the Chiefs, 7 and 9 from the Broncos, 5 and 11 from the Raiders. Check out the team schedule though. Who do we end up losing to? 2 and 2 in the preseason. We lost the opening game to the Jaguars and won a whole bunch in a row. Lost to the Broncos, we saw that already. Lost to the Rams and the Seahawks. So lost to some pretty good teams. I think the Broncos were the worst team we lost to, but I mean the Jaguars, Rams, and Seahawks all do normally very well in simulation. 5,018 yards from Phillip Rivers. 43 touchdowns, 14 picks. 
That is a fantastic season. I don't think he won MVP, which I'm kind of surprised to see, by the way. 12,078 yards from Melvin Gordon, eight touchdowns, one fumble. Austin Eckler, pretty good season again from a backup, nine touchdowns. Phillip Rivers even got two rushing touchdowns of his own. Keenan Allen, 105 catches, 1,575 yards, eight touchdowns. Mike Williams, 1,323 yards, 97 catches, 14 touchdowns. Tyrell Williams had seven touchdowns. Hunter Henry had five. I think Melvin Gordon also had five down there. Not many sacks let up at all. <laughs> that is great to see. Our uh, rookie middle linebacker, 104 tackles, zero picks. Definitely did not win defensive rookie of the year with that. 96 tackles for Melvin Ingram, 95 from Levante David. Seven tackles for loss from Malcolm Brown. Not bad. We got 21 and a half sacks from Melvin Ingram, 18 from Joey Bosa. That is insane. Nine and a half from Levante David as well. We got two picks from Deion Jones, one from Levante David, Martez Milburn, Trevor Williams, Casey Hayward, and Jalen Watkins. Do we have any touchdowns? We did not get any touchdowns. It's all good, though. Let's check out the awards here. Before I do that, actually, we were first in the NFL on offense, and then we were fourth on defense. Okay, so defense dipped a little bit. Carson Wentz wins MVP. Phillip Rivers comes in second. Anybody from the Chargers? Don't see anybody else. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Phillip Rivers. Anybody else from the Chargers? Don't see him. Defensive Player of the Year actually goes to Melvin Ingram. That's pretty cool that he won that. Joey Bose is in there at number seven. Levante David's in there at number eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Lavaris Street. Okay. Anybody from the Chargers? Kevin Bradford, who is our fullback, comes in at number 10. Defensive Rookie of the Year actually goes to Carrick Garner. That's surprising. We got Milburn. We got Largent in there. Not bad at all. I hope those guys have a good amount of experience. I'm surprised our middle linebacker actually won Defensive Rookie of the Year. But on the offense here, 18,000 from Phillip Rivers, 15,000 from Melvin Gordon, 48K from Mike Williams, 22K from Keenan Allen, 40K from Shaq Mason, 28,000 from Forrest Lamp. This is a lot of experience. On the defense, 10,000 from the strong safety is not bad. 29K from Gardner. It's actually a good amount. 15K from Largent, 18K from Melvin Ingram, 16 for Joey Bosa, Desmond King, only 8.8 thousand. Man, that's rough. Okay, I'll spend this quick and then send by the weeks. I want to show you guys this quickly before I move on. I want to show you what my experience sliders are all about because I've been getting asked that pretty frequently recently. Might as well show it off here in a video. It's 150 for everything except for fullbacks, kickers, and punters, which I have on 300 because why not? I mean, they don't really affect the, the team all that much if you get like a 99 rated fullback. That doesn't really affect the team much, but everything else is on 150. I just got really lucky with this one. I got a lot of experience going on. I want to show you guys something else. Dan Feeney made the Pro Bowl. I don't know how he made the Pro Bowl, but he did. I'll show you guys that right there. 32,000 experience for making the Pro Bowl, so he's an 87 overall. Deloach also made the Pro Bowl as a kick returner. He got 32,000 experience from that, so now he's an 85 overall. That's just super random, but anyway... Philip Rivers is an 88, Melvin Gordon's a 97, Keenan Allen's a 94 with confidence. Uh, Tyra Williams, I don't know why I looked at him, but I did. 85 overall. Should probably start Deloach instead of him. I don't know. Shaq Mason, 94. I mean, this offensive line is ridiculous. 97 from Forrest Lamp. On the defense, this middle linebacker went up quite well. 84 overall. Quick development. I might keep him for the next season, see how he plays. These safeties are both pretty good. Cornerbacks are awesome. Uh, defensive tackles aren't fantastic, but they're still pretty good. Maybe I can try to trade for one of those guys next year. Try to make this team like an undefeated team or something. But let's advance to the next week. See who we have to take on the Steelers, who we will probably lose to. But let's check out the overall. I didn't do that last week. 94 overall. I meant last season, not last week. 94 overall compared to their 91. We should win, but we will probably lose because the Steelers are impossible to beat. Well, so are the Chargers, to be honest. We actually beat the Steelers, and we have to take on the 7-9 and nine Bills. The Bills actually won their first playoff game. Let's go to the Super Bowl, see if we are in it. We should be, honestly. If the Bills are in it, I'll be livid. Okay, we have to take on the 9-7 Seahawks. Let's see if we can come away with a victory. So we are currently getting kind of destroyed here. It's 20-13 now. Actually made it pretty close. 23-13. 23-20. Maybe we can actually win this game. 23-20. We took it into overtime and won. That was an insane Super Bowl. We were down a lot in that game. It was like 20-6 at one point, and we actually brought it back. That's a rough loss for the Seahawks and Russell Wilson and all, you know, all those players. But we won. That's pretty cool. Let's see who won MVP. My guess is Phillip Rivers because he probably played well. It seemed like we had a couple nice passes in this game. Let's see, though. Or Melvin Gordon. I can see him winning Super Bowl MVP. Or maybe it's somebody that got a tackle because that happens sometimes. The game kind of glitches out. Let's see, though. There's Russell Wilson looking rather distraught. I would, I would too, honestly. Earl Thomas shaking the hand of Phillip Rivers and Russell Wilson's there as well. Come on, show me the Super Bowl MVP. Pete Carroll's running by. He looks sad. Melvin Gordon won Super Bowl MVP. 90 yards, zero touchdowns on 20 carries. Uh, I don't know about that. I feel like, yeah, Phillip Rivers probably should have won it. Yeah, definitely. 323 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. That doesn't make much sense. Russell Wilson, 
I actually didn't play that badly. Under 94 yards of touchdown. Didn't do all that much, really, but, I mean, he didn't make many mistakes. Chris Carson, one touchdown, 93 yards. Melvin Gordon did have a pretty good game, but did not deserve, um, you know, MVP. This rookie at 37 yards. Austin Eckler did not have a touchdown this time. Tyrell Williams caught one touchdown. Keenan Allen caught one, as did Deion Sims and Braden Bowman. Okay. Check out the defense, though. A bunch of tackles for loss from, you know, a couple different players. Melvin Ingram, Malik McDowell, Frank Clark, DJ Reader, Joey Bosa, and Malcolm Brown. One and a half sacks from Malik McDowell, one from Frank Clark, and then a half from KJ Wright. We actually did not get any sacks, nor did we get any interceptions. Who led our team in tackles? Let me check that out. Carrick Gardner, the rookie. 12 tackles, not bad. At least we got a Super Bowl under our belt. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can make it two in a row. I'm in free agency here. We really don't have much money at all. $13.61 million. It's all good, though. I don't really need many positions. Melvin, nope, Mark Ingram. I almost said Melvin Ingram. I do that all the time, but Mark Ingram is the top player here. Marcus Mariota is in free agency because of that other quarterback. That is very funny. Maybe I can trade for that other quarterback now and just get back at the Titans for stealing him. Shaq Thompson's actually really good, but I, I don't need him at all. I don't need anybody here, really. I don't think I'm going to go after anybody. I'm trading up with the Raiders right now, giving them my 32nd overall pick in Kendricks, who was the center we drafted last year for pick number two. And I'm also going to be doing one more trade up really fast before I select anybody. I'm trading up with the Giants as well at pick number seven, giving them a 23rd overall pick, Clark, and a fourth rounder, you know, for that seventh overall pick. But with this pick right now, I'm going to be taking a cornerback. I don't even know if he's, he's going to start because I have a ridiculous cornerback core, but this guy has a 7.8 combine grade. I feel like I, I should probably pick him up. 80 overall, normal development, 96 speed, 92 acceleration, 80 man, 82 zone, 82 press, 91 agility. I'll probably start this guy, even though I like Desmond King a lot. He's my lowest cornerback, but I'll probably still, you know, start that guy. I don't know. But this other player I want is a wide receiver. Is it this guy? It's not, but that guy actually is not the dude I want. That guy looks pretty good. I think he has superstar, but it's not the guy I want. Donovan Carter is the guy I want. But actually, the more I think about it, last time I drafted a guy that looked like this, he was horrible, and he had slow development. Will this guy have slow development? Let's see. If he does, then there's a trend here. 81 with normal. Okay, this guy does not have slow development. I think I might start this guy in the slot, even though I do have another wide receiver, that slow developing guy. He uh, is an 85 overall, but I kind of want Donovan Carter to start to see what he can do. So I don't really think I have anybody else scouted that's like that great. There was a good defensive tackle that obviously I couldn't take. This is the only other player I have scouted. CJ Acker, let's just go with him. 70 overall, normal development. We did reach, but he actually has really good stats. The more I look at him, I don't have anybody else in this draft that I really want, so I'm going to skip to the end. This might be the only trade I make this season, not sure, but I'm giving the Rams Malcolm Brown a second and a first rounder for Aaron Donald. This is the team going into this last season here. Phillip Rivers is still the quarterback. I could probably trade for a better quarterback, but I'm going to keep him. Phillip Rivers usually does really well in simulation. I did still want to draft that quarterback, obviously, that the Titans ended up picking up. I'm, I kind of wish I had done that. But, I mean, it's not too bad since Phillip Rivers is here. He threw for 5,000 yards the year after that, you know, after I wanted to replace him. So maybe he heard me. I don't know. But Melvin Gordon, a 96 overall running back. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams make for some very good wide receivers. I'm starting Carter, who is our rookie, just in case that guy can develop to be a god. Best offensive line in the NFL by far at this point. Hunter Henry, very good tight end. I signed Jeff Swaim in free agency just to get a decent backup. Why not sign him? He's not bad. And then on the defense, we got these safeties who are looking very good. Milburn apparently is an 88 free safety. Don't know why he goes up there. I'm going to keep him at strong, though. Uh, Carter... Wait, Garner, not Garner. His name's Carrick Garner. There we go. Is a starting middle linebacker. Levante David, Deion Jones, outside linebackers are very good players there. Farmer, I'm going to start at the nickel instead of Desmond King because I want to see if Farmer can get some, you know, a lot of experience. Get some a lot of experience. What does that even mean? Get a lot of experience. Let me make up my mind. I want to see if he can do that. That would be nice. Casey Hayward, Trevor Williams, the number one, number two corner. Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa, still our edge rushers. Aaron Donald moves in to defensive tackle number one. He can play pretty much anywhere on the field. I just want to see something. Really quickly, I want to see what he goes up to at safety. Or goes down to at safety. Obviously, he's not going to stay a 99. I just want to see if he's, like, in the 80s at free safety. That would be insane. <laughs> I just want to see. He's an 83 free safety. Are you kidding me? He has 35 zone coverage, and he's still an 83 at, at free safety. That is so funny. Well, let's move him back to defensive tackle. I just wanted to see what happened if I put him up to, to safety. But defensive tackle is where he's going to play, of course. And then we have um, DJ Reader at the second defensive tackle spot, 87 overall, not a bad player. This team is amazing. This team should easily make the playoffs. I'm going to move 
Jatavis Brown to middle linebacker though, just to get a pretty decent backup middle linebacker, just in case we have any packages like that. I didn't really take a look at the defensive playbook too much. I know this team runs a 4-3, so I just kind of trusted that the game, you know, knew, knew so as well. But let's go to the end of the season. Actually, I'll spend my little bit of coach experience first, and then I'll see you at the end of the year. We got another first round bye. That's pretty awesome. Two players regressed though. Who did that? Drew Kayser and Caleb Sturgis. Okay, so our kicker and our punter regressed. That's kind of annoying. What was the record all about? 14-2. and two. I am never going to go undefeated. <laughs> it's all good, though. The Chiefs 9-7, and seven, the Raiders 7-9, and nine, the Broncos 4-12. and 12. Who did we lose to? So, 1-3 and three in the preseason. We lost to the Bears 31-17, and we lost to the Vikings 19-17. Okay, so the Vikings game was very close. This Bears one wasn't as close. Two-possession game. Definitely probably still winnable. I always say stuff definitely probably. What does that even mean? Phillip Rivers, 4,473 yards, 41 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. It's a great season. I'll definitely take it for sure. 1,333 yards for Melvin Gordon, 13 touchdowns, and 1 fumble. Austin Eckler, 685 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 1 fumble. Phillip Rivers this time did not get a rushing touchdown. Did not fumble, though. That's really surprising. And Roy Ellison, another running back we have, 2 touchdowns. Okay. Uh, 94 catches for Mike Williams at 967 yards, 8 touchdowns. Keenan Allen, though, 1,310 yards, 14 touchdowns. This rookie, nearly 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Not a bad season. Hunter Henry got 7. Probably should have started Mike Williams in the slot, but it's all good. <laughs> we only let up 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sacks. That is insane. 3 from Zach Martin at left tackle. That's phenomenal. 116 tackles from Carrick Garner. Not bad. 20 tackles for loss from Aaron Donald who had 15 sacks as well, but 20 and a half from Melvin Ingram, and then 11 from Joey Bosa. This D-line is insane. Seven and a half from Levante David as well. We got six picks from Reed Largent, our free safety. Five from Desmond King. Okay, so he played. I'm not really that upset about it because I got five interceptions. I definitely switched him out though. I don't know how he even played. We got two, not, never mind, three from Martez Milburn, two from Trevor Williams, one from Melvin Ingram, Levante David, Deion Jones, Carrick Garner, and Casey Hayward. So our rookie corner didn't get one. It's not really that big of a deal though. I don't think he would have went up all that much anyway. And then one touchdown from Trevor Williams. So we were second in the NFL in offense. Defense had to have been top five for sure. First. Okay, so we were first in the NFL on defense. Phillip Rivers wins MVP. So I'm glad I kept him. I was thinking about trading him to get another better quarterback. But, I mean, there was no better player in the NFL, obviously, other than him this year. So Blake Bortles comes in second. Tom Brady in third. Okay, anybody else from the Chargers? I'm surprised that um, Melvin Gordon didn't make this. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady, even though Phillip Rivers won MVP. Whatever. Melvin Gordon did not make this either. There's Davenport, of course, the one rookie we wanted. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Melvin Ingram. We got Garner in there and Aaron Donald and Levante David. Offensive Rookie of the Year does go to Donovan Carter. That's really surprising. I didn't expect him to make it. That's pretty cool. That was our wide receiver, of course. Defensive Player of the Year, nobody from the Chargers. Best quarterback goes to Phillip Rivers, even though Tom, this is weird. Tom Brady won Offensive Player of the Year. Phillip Rivers won MVP and Best Quarterback. I don't know. Anybody on the list for running back? Melvin Gordon, number five. I don't know why I said anybody. I know who our running back was. Robert Kelly of the 2 and 14 Bills makes it. I'm surprised they went 2 and 14. Nobody else from the Chargers, of course. Keenan Allen is on there for wide receiver of the year, but he's second. Antonio Brown wins that. That's honestly kind of understandable. Donovan Carter actually makes the list at number 10. Number 9, my bad, not number 10. Best O-lineman, Zach Martin, Forrest Lamps in there, Shaq Mason's in there, Ronnie Hudson, and Dan Feeney are all in there. So our entire offensive line is in there. Melvin Ingram wins at best D-lineman. We got Aaron Donald up there too. Joey Bosa did not make it. All good though. Best linebacker. TJ Watt actually comes away with that award. Lamonte David comes in sixth. That was a good player to go after. Reed Largent wins best defensive back. Desmond King is in there at number four. Nobody else from the Chargers. Best kicker, Josh Lambeau. I'm surprised our guy didn't make it. I'm actually not surprised at all, considering Caleb Sturgis regressed. It wouldn't really make much sense for him to be in that list then. But anyway, let's check out the experience. I'm sure we have a ton. 17,000 for Phillip Rivers. 31,000 from this wide receiver. Everybody's confident too. This is awesome. Everybody has over like 10,000 aside from the fullback. That's ridiculous. 28,000 from Mike Williams. I saw over there. We got 12,000 from Milburn, but 54,000 from Large and 15k from Melvin Ingram, 14k from Joey Bosa. Let me mention that I'm sorry if I ever messed up Melvin Ingram and Mark Ingram or Melvin Gordon. I'm sorry if I messed up any of their names. They're just to me they're so easy to mess up. So I probably did at some point in this video. I just I should you know probably mention that Desmond King 7.7 thousand. Honestly, I thought he'd get more. It's all good though. I've been saying it's all good so much in this. I'm sorry that I keep doing that. <laughs> Here's a look at the team before I do anything, you know, with simulation. This team is easily one of the best I've ever had. I figured it was going to turn out this way because the Chargers always develop so well. They're insane 
in simulation. 98 overall for Melvin Gordon. 95 for Keenan Allen, but Mike Williams is a 97 with confidence. He should probably be the number one receiver. Carter's an 88 with confidence. His offensive line, ridiculous. Hunter Henry's a 98. And then on the defense, our middle linebacker is definitely the weakest part, but he's still an 87. Like, he's still really good. Deion Jones is good over here. Levante David. Largent's a 97 now. He's insane with superstar development. 99 zone coverage, too. Uh, 92 for Casey Hayward. 88 for Trevor Williams. Still 86 for Desmond King. I don't know why I said 88 still for Trevor Williams. I think he was an 87 last year. This defensive line is ridiculous. This team is just insane. This should be back-to-back -back Super Bowls, but let's check it out. Let's check out the overall, too. This team should be like a 95, 96, maybe. 96 overall, but the Steelers are a 95. So I can definitely see us losing this game. I feel like if we're going to lose to any team, it'll probably be the Steelers. But let's see. Two of the hardest teams to beat in the AFC go against each other, and we come out victorious. 11-5 for the Browns. It's actually kind of surprising. Let's go to the Super Bowl, see if we make it back-to-back -back seasons. We did against the Seahawks again. This is the exact same Super Bowl as last year. Let's see if we can, you know, have the same outcome. This game was pretty close early on, but we're actually taking a bit of a lead here. 24 to 16 now. They only got a field goal there. 27 to 16. This looks like we should have another Super Bowl victory. 30 to 16. We won once again. Much more convincing fashion as well. I think we had the lead pretty much the entire game. Russell Wilson is still the quarterback there. I'm sure he had probably a pretty decent game. Pete Carroll walking him out, of course. They're all distressed because they lost another Super Bowl against the Chargers, but let's check out who the Super Bowl MVP was. Maybe it's somebody that actually won it because last year it was Melvin Gordon, and I highly doubt he was actually awarded with it considering he only had like 90 yards, and Phillip Rivers, he also didn't have a touchdown, and Phillip Rivers had like 350 yards with three touchdowns and zero picks. I mean, Phillip Rivers definitely would have won that in real life, but Casey Hayward shaking the hands of Frank Clark and, and Russell Wilson, of course. Pete Carroll running out there. Melvin Gordon gets it again. <laughs> what did he do? 28 carries, 128 yards, two touchdowns. That's a lot more believable, but let's see what Phillip Rivers did. If Phillip Rivers did anything better, he probably should have won it. I don't think he did. Yeah, no, only 186 yards, one touchdown. Russell Wilson didn't play terribly, 203 yards, one touchdown. Both quarterbacks kind of played the same, but Melvin Gordon definitely deserved it this time. Russell Wilson had 18 carries for 68 yards. Why did he run the ball so much? Chris Carson had 76 yards. Russell Wilson had more carries than his running back. That is ridiculous. 8 catches, 88 yards for Keenan Allen with a touchdown. And then Duran Lamontag, the one player, he was on their team last year. He had a touchdown. He's a running back. But let's check out tackles. Who are the most tackles? Carrick Gardner had 9. Let me check out my team. 9 from Carrick Gardner, 6 from Martez Milburn and DJ Reader. Tackles for loss, 1 from Melvin Ingram and DJ Reader. Melvin Ingram? Yep, okay, I was right. My bad. I keep thinking I'm saying Mark Ingram. Whatever. Zero sacks, no interceptions. Kind of a boring game on defense, but whatever. We won a Super Bowl again. So there is my Chargers rebuild. We are 99 on offense, 99 on defense. A super successful rebuild, but I figured it would go this way because the Chargers are a very easy team to rebuild. If you guys are, you know, just getting started on rebuilds, this is a very, very easy team to start out with. You can honestly just sim three seasons and they'll probably have won a Super Bowl or two just with their regular roster. But it's fun to try to make this team go 16 and 0 because this is probably one of the easiest teams to do it with, even though, you know, I couldn't even do it. I went 14 and 2. But thank you guys very much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.